Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name is Jonathan, tech geek, fun fact, fan, and speed freak with cars and the internet. Yeah, and I'm Sarah. I love road trips off the beaten path, carpool karaoke, and driving with the top down. (laughs) (laughs) And today on the show, we're talking about autonomous driving. Now, Mm, it's something we all have heard of, maybe some of us have experienced a little bit of, but very few of us have had the opportunity to actually understand what autonomous driving really is. Well, maybe until now. Experts think that with automated driving, the car industry is going to change more drastically than it has over the past 30 years. And it's been a revolution in the making since the 90s, in fact. Back when the idea still seemed like something from science fiction, uh, engineers and technicians at BMW were already working on driver assistance systems. Now, this is so cool. This is so tech geeky of us to dive into. So, Sarah, did you ever watch the cartoon The Jetsons as a kid? As a matter of fact, Jonathan, I did. But, oh, my God, that really dates me, doesn't it? I know. <laughs> same here, a long right? time ago. Gosh. So if you don't know what it is, check it out on YouTube. It's pretty cool. And I always thought it was so cool in the Jetsons, this futuristic cartoon yeah. show, that people could talk to someone on their TV or step out a conveyor belt to go from point A to point B, or even travel in cars that drove themselves. Yeah, and you know what, Jonathan? Uh, The future seems to be now. So, I mean, from the Jetsons, talking to someone on the TV is now video conferencing, which we've all heard of or even participated in, and stepping on a conveyor belt to get from A to B is pretty standard now in lots of airports, and traveling in a car that drives itself is definitely not something that's very far off in the future. Okay. Totally, yeah. (laughs) All right, so today on the podcast, we break down the five levels of autonomous driving. They are level one, driver assistance, like driver assistance systems that support the driver but do not take control. Then there's level two, partly automated driving. Now, these are systems that can also take control, but the driver remains responsible for operating the vehicle. And from there, there's level three, which is highly automated driving. So that means in certain situations, the driver can actually disengage from the driving for extended periods of time. And then there's level four, which is fully automated driving. And that means the vehicle drives independently most of the time. The driver has to remain able able to drive, but can take a nap, for example. Right. But of course, safety first. And then we finish with level five, full automation. Now, this is cool. This is when the vehicle assumes all driving functions and the people in the vehicle, they're only passengers. Yeah. So whatever your standpoint is on automated driving, we hope that this podcast sheds a bit of light on where we started from, where we are now, and also where we are going in the future. Or you could say from driver only to robo taxi. Yeah. So let's dive in. Okie doke. So we'll start with level zero, which is pretty easy to explain. No automation whatsoever. No support from any driver assistance systems. It's just you in the car, driving, no assistance whatsoever. Right. So basically, these are the cars that our grandparents drove and also our parents. Yep. So just to clarify, level zero, it's a normal car, no assistance, nothing nada, nothing else to see here. All right. Let's move on to level one, which is driver assistance. Now, this is pretty common already and is offered in all of the current BMW vehicles. Some examples for level one are assistance systems like active cruise control. This automatically and independently adjusts the distance to the car in front of you, right? And then there's also collision and pedestrian warning with city brake activation, which prevents collisions with automatic braking. So cruise control. I mean, Sarah, I think we all understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. Th- that's really good for these really long journeys on the highway. And, and most of us have used it for one time or another. Yeah, I know yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah, me too. And now then there's collision and pedestrian warning with city brake activation. Now, this is something that I personally think is a piece of technological genius. All right, so say you're driving down the street 
and a few kids are playing kickball in the front yard, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah. And then one kid kicks the ball into the street and one of the kids runs into the street without looking both ways, which can totally happen. I mean, totally. We, Very we dangerous, though. We all were kids, though. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So with collision and pedestrian warning with city brake activation, now that means that the car will automatically brake to avoid collision with the ball and the child running into the street. That's amazing. So yeah. for all the parents out there, this function of autonomous driving will definitely help you sleep better. Oh, you can say that again. And the Safety Auditing Institute, Euro NCAP, actually honored this BMW feature as a groundbreaking innovation in the area of accident prevention and passenger protection and gave it the Euro NCAP Advanced Award. Awesome. So level one covers the basics active cruise control, and collision and pedestrian warning with city brake activation. Yep. Got it. All right, so let's move on to level two. Mm -hmm. Level two is partly automated driving. Okay. Now, what does that mean, right? So functions that make partial automation possible are actually, they're already a reality. Huh? Yep. They are already installed in the latest BMWs on the street right now. So like semi-autonomous driving assistant systems, such as the steering and lane control assistant, including traffic jam assistant, make daily driving so much easier. They can brake automatically, they can accelerate, and unlike level one, they can sometimes take over steering. Yeah, so if you've ever seen a car park itself, this is level two. With the remote-controlled parking function, BMW has made it possible to pull into tight spots without a driver for the first time. Sounds like something that I need. In level two, the driver continues to remain in control of the car and must always pay attention to traffic, but can get some help with the really tight parking spots. Exactly. So it kind of sounds like it's more of an assistant than level one with remote-controlled parking assistance, steering and lane control, and helping out in a traffic jam, this is definitely a step up in autonomous driving. Level two, the car can take over steering, but it's still important to have the option to keep your hands on the wheel. Sarah, ugh, I'm dying to know more, and I think the listeners are as well. Tell us about level three. So get ready. Level three is highly automated driving. Now, this is where you can finally do other stuff while the car takes over. Well, at least under certain conditions. Okay, so level three has conditional automation systems. So that means the car will be able to drive autonomously over long distances in certain traffic situations, such as on motorways. But, and this is important, the driver must be able to take over again within a few seconds. Okay, so when the car approaches, I don't know, like a construction site, you need to be able to take the wheel again, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so no sleeping in your car yet? No, nope, not yet. Not <laughs> okay. in level three. Gotcha. So future BMW personal co-pilot systems of the third development stage will give drivers more freedom to completely turn their attention away from the road under certain conditions. So in other words, they'll be able to hand over complete control to the car. Well, this may sound a bit too futuristic, almost too much like the Jetsons cartoon. But in fact, BMW research vehicles have been testing highly automated driving on public roads for several years now, and the goal is to actually reach the consumer market just in the next few years. This is so cool. So <laughs> it is. Yeah. That was level three. Let's move on to level four. Level four is fully automated driving. Now, Sarah, this is where you can finally take a nap behind the wheel? Yep, it is, Jonathan. Yep. Okay, this is so cool. Now, level four is considered to be fully autonomous driving. Although a human driver can still request control, the choice is yours, and the car still has a cockpit. So in level four, the car can handle the majority of driving situations independently. The technology in level four is developed to the point that a car can handle highly complex urban driving situations, such as the sudden appearance of construction sites without any driver intervention. Yeah, but the driver still has to remain fit to drive and also capable of taking over control if needed. But the driver would be able to have a nap, at least temporarily. 
If the driver, though, ignores a warning alarm, the car does have the authority to move into safe conditions, for example, by pulling over. Now, this is super important for anybody. And, and, I mean, I, I think you have to be safe, you know, when you're behind the wheel. So this is so good to know. And I think it's pretty fascinating, too. A car that can pull itself into a safe zone, like on the side of the road, if need be. That's yeah. so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Fully automated driving. Oh, hang on, Jonathan. We still do have level five. Well, yeah, but... I thought autonomous driving was just what we described. You can take a nap behind the wheel and still get to your destination. Yeah, yeah, that that general summary is correct. But there is actually yet another level to autonomous driving, and that truly is the future. Oh, please do tell. Well, level five is full automation, the Mount Everest of autonomous driving. This is the level where a driver doesn't need to be fit to drive. Not even a driver's license is required. Basically, everyone becomes a passenger. Wowzers. So, in theory, not even a steering wheel and a cockpit would be needed. Nope, they wouldn't be needed. Level 5 is still some time away. There are still lots of questions unanswered. I mean, cars at this level will clearly need to meet stringent safety demands, among many other conditions. But, I mean, just imagine a future with level 5 automation. Cars with that kind of automation will be a complete game changer. Like, for example, people with disabilities. Even if you aren't able to drive, you can still experience the individual freedom of a car. Yeah, and I mean, also think about just the amount of time it frees up. Yeah. You can spend time with your family while the car drives you to your vacation destination. Or you can watch a movie in the back seat. The question is no longer, how long until we get there so then I can do something I want to do? The question now is, how do I want to spend my free time in a level 5 full automation vehicle? Wow. So unlike levels 3 and 4, the full automation of level 5 is where true autonomous driving becomes a reality. But my next question is, where will full automation vehicles be allowed to drive? That is an excellent question, Jonathan. And you know, because fully autonomous vehicles are not on the streets yet, and there's still lots of things that need to be tested, the concept of full automation vehicles is to have them drive at relatively low speeds within populated areas. So they're also able to drive on highways, but initially they'll only be used in certain defined areas within city centers. So I could transform my full automation vehicle into a second living room? Um, yeah, I guess you can look at it that way. Okay, and I could add in a cool sound system? Oh, absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. What about a bathtub? Uh, well, bathtub, I mean, it's a nice idea, but um, you may want to think about uh, what could happen if the car possibly breaks. I mean, even at a slow driving tempo, if the car, you know, does break down, the water in the bathtub might spill over the edge and get on your decked out sound system. And then the car will have to pull over into the safety lane, not because of the traffic or any outside circumstances, but because of your bubble bath. Uh, true, true. Uh, but a guy can dream, right? Oh, yeah. You can definitely dream. <laughs> so, everybody, there you have it. The five levels of autonomous driving. Number one, driver assistance, like driver assistance systems that support the driver but don't take control. Level two, partly automated driving, which are systems that can also take control but the driver remains responsible for operating the vehicle. Then level three, highly automated driving. So in certain situations, the driver can disengage from the driving for extended periods of time. Then level four, fully automated driving. The vehicle drives independently most of the time, but the driver must remain able to drive, but can, for example, take a nap. And then there's level five, which is full automation. The vehicle assumes all driving functions, and the people in the vehicle are only passengers, bathtub not included. Now you're well informed and can add your two cents to the dinner conversation when the topic of autonomous driving comes up. That said, I feel like we just opened a can of worms. There's so many more topics to discuss. Oh man, I know. I mean, maybe we should even invite some experts to dig deeper into autonomous driving onto the podcast. 
That's a really good idea. But in the meantime, if you want to read more about this topic and many others, do head on over to bmw.com and just search for autonomous and you'll find everything you need right there. Like this fancy piece of trivia. Did you know that 240 million test kilometers need to be driven to make the technology ready for mass production? Uh, I did not know that. Pretty cool, right? It is, yeah. So to learn even more fun facts about autonomous driving, head on over to BMW.com. And that's it for this episode of Changing Lanes. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast for future episodes. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jonathan. And this has been Changing Lanes. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.